Good morning, afternoon and night to whoever might be watching this video. My name is Rafael Bezerra and I welcome to my channel. In this video I am going to talk about the film Leave Her to Heaven from 1945, directed by John M. Stahl. This is simply one of the best films from the golden age of Hollywood. Giving it a quick look, it might even appear to be a corny and soulless film, but I'm sure that it can overcome expectations as much as it did with me. In the story we follow a successful writer who meets a peculiar woman while traveling a train. They spend some time getting to know each other to then finally marry and move to a house in the lake. However, Ellen starts to demonstrate an each time wither behavior and an obsession that might lead everyone to their ruins. Leave her to heaven despite of the colorful and bright visuals can maybe be considered part of the noir genre. The noir films started as thrillers in France and that's the reason for the name. Considered the tense period of war, those films would depict a more violent urban scenario with characters often have a dubious sense of morality. All that wrap up with a much darker cinematography than usual, displaying heavy shadows all over the places. Up to date, it is extremely difficult to actually define a film noir, in the sense that it is more of a visual style than anything else and one not restricted only to detective stories. Citizen Kane, among others, is a clear example of its use, even though it's a drama, and Leave Her to Heaven is an special case regarding the film's noir. The implication of this film in particular being a color one differs a little bit from others. If The Wizard of Oz, even not being the first technicolor film, somehow divided the black and white world from the colorful one, then Leave Her to Heaven divides the preconception of what a colorful film needs to mean to the public. Let's go part by part. The system used to color the film was the popular Technicolor. Technicolor was the name of the company founded in Boston in 1914 by Herbert Kalmus, Daniel Comstock and Burton Westcott. At the beginning, the system would work solely with two prima colors, red and green. The process itself is very, very complicated both to properly comprehend it and to be put in practice. The equipment size was twice bigger, heavier and noisier than before. It surely was nothing cheap to do. And when the Great Depression came, the studios left this concept a little bit aside. After some years, they returned to it with more innovations along the path, such as the addition of a third color. Now there was red, green and blue. The three complementary footage of a same scene, each one of a filter of a different color, would be juxtaposed to create those bright and iconic visuals of films such as The Thief of Baghdad, The Adventures of Robin Hood and The Wizard of Oz. I really think that if We Leave Her to Heaven had been made in black and white, it would be a completely distinct film. Perhaps the story would receive a more shadowy cinematograph, but the soul of it is not what is hidden in the shadows, but I ask about the dangers located on the very surface of the appearance. One absolutely recognizable detail, almost intrinsic to the Noah genre, was the presence of the femme fatale, surprisingly strong and manipulative family characters, but that for the most part occupied the spot of being simply supporting figures to the actor main character. But here, gradatively, the film focuses entirely her, Ellen Barrent, Jen Chirner gives one of the best performances ever, what was a positive surprise to me who hadn't seen anything with her before. Actually, when looking up about her, she certainly had a pretty difficult life herself. Starting a career already at 17, always with a big pressure over her, she developed anxiety and even depression, being turned several times. Those were fortunes gives a new layer to her acting leave her to heaven. After all, Ellen faces an obsession, at first moment completely harmless but then bringing morbid consequence to everyone around. When narrating those happenings, it almost feels like it is a terror film, the silent drowning of the boy, the micro expressions in Ellen's face as if she was possessed by something else. It's nice to think how so little things would be needed to completely change the tone. At times, I would think like there is no way that they are going to put this in the film, but they did. Of course, in a more clear manner as usual back there, but nevertheless, they did insert it after all. And it was cruel. People tend to behave like fairy tale characters in romance, especially in Hollywood, and here the guy did find an extremely beautiful woman, 
it just didn't unroll as usual. The classical carny storyline of a woman who is almost unexistent in anything but to give love, but here the same excessive and unreal love is what destroys everyone. A perfect metaphor to an abusive relationship in a narrative that ironically follows the structure of a typical love story, out is released in 1945. Jealousy used to be a monster with green eyes, but now with technicolor it hides within other colors. The entire idea of tension for this is to subvert everyone's expectations on it. The house by the lake called Back of the Moon has absolutely nothing of dark in it, and Ellen at the first moment wears white and then mostly blue, relaxing colors that have nothing to do with her true nature. We as spectators are the only ones to realize this clearly. This contrast highlights how good the actress Jean was here when her character is basically acting all the time. She gets visibly jealously, yet puts an immense bro effort in hiding it. Despite of all their smiles, you can see in her eyes and the subtle cheeks what she's truly feeling. In fact, every single action done by her appears to be so calculated, as the apparently unpretentious chicles that she makes on him, as if trying to interrogate him. That's a singular case in Hollywood where casting someone simply by her aesthetics was actually geniuses. She's a woman almost made of porcelain, with pink she and bluish tones all around reinforce her supposedly big innocence, but in reality, she lets his brother-in-law to draw, coldly harms herself in order to kill her unborn child, and as a final act, seeks to leave everyone completely destroyed, if not with her. Those were my thoughts on the film Leave Her to Heaven from 1945, directed by John M. Stahl. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe and to check my letterbox page in the description, and I see you in my next video.